Solas. Chapter 1. It deals with the general provisions relating to the regulations and survey requirements of the Convention. It also includes provisions for the control of ships in ports of other contracting governments. Chapter 2. It is divided into two parts, Chapter 2-1 and Chapter 2-2. Chapter 2-1 deals with the construction features of passenger and cargo ships. It also includes requirements regarding the subdivision, stability, machinery, and electrical installations. Chapter 2-2 deals fire protection, fire detection, and fire extinction. Chapter 3. It deals with life-saving appliances and arrangements, which include requirements for lifeboats, rescue boats, and life jackets, depending on the type of ship. The technical requirements of life-saving appliances are given in a separate mandatory booklet known as the LSA Code. Chapter 4. It deals with radio communications, which incorporate the Global Maritime Distress Safety System. The carriage of equipments like the Search and Rescue Transponder and Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon is made mandatory for all cargo and passenger ships of 300 gross tonnage and upwards. Chapter 4 is closely linked to the radio regulations of the International Telecommunication Union. Chapter 5 It deals with the safety of navigation and identifies certain navigation safety services provided by contracting governments. Some of the subjects covered include the maintenance of meteorological services for ships, ice patrol services, routing of ships, and the maintenance of search and rescue services. This chapter also makes it mandatory to carry the voyage data recorder and automatic identification systems for certain ships. Chapter 6. It deals with the carriage of all cargoes except liquids and gases in bulk. The regulations in Chapter 6 also cover the requirements for stowage and securing of cargo and cargo units, such as containers. This chapter requires cargo ship carrying grain to comply with the International Grain Code. Chapter 7 It deals with the carriage of dangerous goods, which is subdivided into the following parts. Part A covers the carriage of dangerous goods in packaged form. Part A-1 covers the carriage of dangerous goods in solid form in bulk. Part B covers the construction and equipment of ships carrying dangerous liquid chemicals in bulk. Part C covers construction and equipment of ships carrying liquefied gases in bulk. Part D covers special requirements for the carriage of packaged irradiated nuclear fuel, plutonium, and high-level radioactive wastes on board ships. Chapter 8. It deals with the basic requirements for nuclear-powered ships with regard to radiation hazards. Chapter 9. It deals with the management for the safe operation of ships and makes the International Safety Management Code mandatory. Chapter 10. It deals with the safety measures for high-speed crafts. Chapter 11. It is further divided into two parts and deals with special measures to enhance maritime safety. Chapter 11 1 deals with the requirements related to the authorization of recognized organizations that carry out surveys and inspections. It also deals with enhanced surveys, ship identification number schemes, and the operational requirements of the port state control. Chapter 11 2 deals with the adoption of the International Ship and Port Facilities Code. Chapter 12. It deals with additional safety measures for bulk carriers, which include structural requirements for bulk carriers more than 150 meter in length. Chapter 13. Verification of Compliance. Under 3 Code, International Maritime Organization Instruments Implementation Code. Contracting governments shall use the provisions of this code for implementation and the execution of their obligations and responsibilities in safety of life at sea convention. 
This was made mandatory from 1st January 2016, the International Maritime Organization Member State Audit Scheme. Chapter 14 Safety Measures for Ships Operating in Polar Waters The Polar Code International code for ships operating in polar waters has been developed to increase the safety of ships' operation and mitigate the impact on the people and environment in the remote, vulnerable, and potentially harsh polar waters. The chapter was made mandatory from 1 January 2017, the introduction and part 1. A. Of the International Code for Ships Operating in Polar Waters, the Polar Code. 